what motivated me most was knowing how this whole process with the Digital Education Action Plan and you know Europe-wide digital education policy is being shaped now, like right now it's happening. And it's going in a direction that I think can be improved. And it can be improved by opening the shutters that are closed. A lot of people have their focus on digital education. Isn't that about digital equipment in schools? Wi-Fi access, tablets, computers, and uh, te teachers trained to use those. So I wanted to contribute to widening this, these shutters and saying, but it's also important, um, like what we do with analog media to teach digital skills. And you remember the, the huge, big music machine that was standing on the table? That's about teaching the IPO principle, input processing output. But with the P, the processing in capital letters. Whereas in the digital education policy I'm seeing in Europe, the P, if at all present, is very minor and it's just swiping, clicking, using the machines without seeing, like, without unblocking the box, without looking how does this work. So that was the intention. And then one step further to stress that in our media maturity matrix, in the research instrument designed to look at digital education with a wide view, we also had this area of cooperating with parents. That's so important. The younger the children, the more important it is. Then also um, kind of the resource-oriented protection or prevention of digital risks. I originally come from research on digital addictions like IDD, Internet Gaming Disorder, so um, how to put the two together, uh, preventing digital risks and fostering digital skills. How does that work? So then the best way to do this is always to show examples. So the big music box or the binary marble adding machine or the, the analog Mentimeter <laughs> exercise that we did. They are just ways to show, open your mind and try to think, are there other ways of doing this that would not increase children's screen time?